What's up guys and gals? On today's video, we're gonna break down mesh routers versus traditional wireless routers. And we'll talk about the differences between the two systems. And we're gonna explain the advantages and disadvantages of each system. And we're also gonna talk about the price difference. And then lastly, we'll tell you which one you should have for your exact home. I'm Michael Scott, and this is the Ultimate Tech Hub. So let's start with traditional wireless routers. These are the most popular systems and most people will have these in their homes. The router sends a Wi-Fi signal from one central point in your home. For instance, like a device in your living room. And this signal should spread throughout your entire house. And this system works well if you live in a small or medium sized home, like an apartment or condominium. However, in large single story homes, you may end up with dead zones where the signal is weak, unreliable, or no signal at all. However, if you have a higher end router, you may not encounter these dead zones. So it's very important to first read the specs on the box to see the coverage area size, which is in square feet. And second, you also need to know the size of your home to compare to the router's coverage area. And you'll find apps and websites that will help determine your home size accurately. In the best case scenario, you want your router to cover a little bit more than the size of your home, but not too much because you'll be wasting your signal. And third, placement of the router is very important. It must be in the central part of your home. A dead center location would be perfect, but somewhere central in your house will work fine. By doing this, you have the best chance to cover your entire home with a strong and reliable Wi-Fi signal. However, if you place your router at one end of the house, then half of the Wi-Fi signal will go to your neighbor's home or into the street, which means half of your home will have weak Wi-Fi or no Wi-Fi at all. And this Wi-Fi issue can be prevented by putting the router in the center of the home. Now, if your modem is not in a central location, it's very easy to install an ethernet cable from the modem to the router's location, which is in the center of your home. You can run your ethernet through a small hole in the wall or through the attic or along the baseboards. Just get creative. And sometimes ISPs will do this for you and it can't hurt to ask. Just give them a call. So now we're gonna talk about mesh router systems. And these systems are not as popular as traditional routers. So here's how it works. Instead of one device, it uses multiple smaller devices called nodes. These nodes work together to spread Wi-Fi evenly throughout your home. It's like having multiple small routers working as a team, giving you strong and reliable coverage everywhere, even in hard to reach places. Once again, it's super important to read the specs on the box for the maximum coverage area. Also, you'll need to figure out if you're gonna use a wireless backhaul or a wired backhaul. And don't worry if you're confused, let me explain. A wireless backhaul is the most popular and easiest to set up. And most mesh routers by default are configured as a wireless backhaul. And this makes the mesh system a simple plug and play, which is great for those who have very little networking knowledge. So what this all means is that the nodes will connect to each other and the main router through the wireless signal on the 2.4 and or the five gigahertz band and even possibly the 6 gigahertz band if you have Wi-Fi 6E or Wi-Fi 7 mesh. This wireless backhaul carries a signal seamlessly from one node to the other with no interruptions. And yes, this uses one SSID that your device connects to automatically no matter where you are in your home and requires no additional configurations. Super easy, high five. Now a wire backhaul is achieved by connecting the nodes to the router via an ethernet cable from one LAN port to another. This is by far the best scenario because wired is always faster, more reliable, and more secure than wireless. However, it's also the hardest one to set up since you'll have to run very long ethernet cables throughout your home to reach all the nodes. And just a heads up, you may need to change these router backhaul settings, so check the user manual. Whether you choose a wireless backhaul or a wired backhaul, placement of these nodes is imperative. You want optimal coverage of these nodes with overlapping of the Wi-Fi signals. But keep in mind, you want overlapping, but not too much because in reality, this will waste the Wi-Fi signal. So just a little bit overlapping. And once again, read the specs on the box and in the manual, which will indicate how much area each node covers, which is in square feet. Now with a wireless backhaul, all you need is a power outlet to get these nodes up and running. No other cables are required. And with a wire backhaul, you'll need a power outlet as well as an ethernet cable running from the router to the node, which makes it more difficult. And just a heads up, some of these mesh systems will have additional LAN ports on the back of these nodes which is fantastic. This means you can plug your TV, gaming console, or PC into the back of the node. And once again, check the specs on the back of the box before you buy. And remember, more LAN ports is more better. So what are the advantages and disadvantages of both systems? Well, traditional wireless routers have the advantage of simplicity. One device to control your entire network and no additional setup. 
Just plug in your router and configure the wireless network and you're pretty much done. The disadvantage is that it may not cover your entire house with a strong and reliable signal. And you may even have those dreaded dead zones. However, if you do your research and buy the correct router for your size home, then this shouldn't be an issue. But keep in mind, if you have a two-story home or three-story home or a home with a basement, then a traditional wireless router will probably not cover the upstairs or the basement. And I've had this issue before in my previous home where the upstairs had a weak signal or no signal at all. When it comes to speed, traditional routers are faster than mesh routers. And this is because traditional routers tend to offer higher speeds and contain more advanced hardware than mesh routers. If you do a lot of 4K streaming or gaming, then a traditional router is the way to go. However, if you need range over speed, then go mesh. So what are the advantages and disadvantages of a mesh system? Well, mesh systems have the advantage of a super wide coverage area, which means large one-story homes or two-story homes or three-story homes or even homes with basements can have a strong signal through all areas of the house. And that's fantastic. And you can also add additional nodes to these systems. So you can basically increase the Wi-Fi signal to an unlimited area. And once again, that's pretty awesome. Now the disadvantage of the mesh system is that it's more difficult to set up because you'll need additional power outlets and maybe even ethernet cable if you're gonna do a wired backhaul. And many of these mesh routers have limited features like no USB ports or no dedicated gaming ports or very few LAN ports or no LAN ports at all or no directional antennas. However, if you do your research, you can find mesh systems with all those features except for directional antennas. Mesh routers do not have directional antennas. But there is a price to be paid for these features. And that brings us to the price differences between these two systems. For the most part, mesh routers will cost more money if you choose a three node system with Wi-Fi 6E or Wi-Fi 7 specs. And if they have USB ports and 10 gig LAN or WAN ports, then it will get very expensive. However, you can buy mesh systems on a budget but with limited features and no six gigahertz band and definitely no 10 gig ports or USB ports. But most consumers don't need these features. As far as traditional routers go, they are cheaper than three node mesh systems, but not always. Traditional routers can get very expensive, especially when you're talking about Wi-Fi 6E and Wi-Fi 7. However, there are a plethora of traditional routers on the market below $300 or even $200. And these routers can cover up to 2000 square feet which is pretty solid. Also, most new traditional routers have the ability to add a second router in mesh mode. Wait a minute, a traditional router that's also a mesh router? That's right, but it will cost you some money. And buying two routers to work in mesh mode is far more expensive than buying a mesh system. And the big advantage is if you love that router that you currently have, then all you have to do is buy a compatible router and run it in mesh mode. And typically each brand has a list of compatible routers that you can run in mesh mode. But once again, you're buying two routers and that can be very expensive. So lastly, which one should you choose for your home network? Traditional or mesh? Well, here's the answer. If you have a smaller space, like an apartment, a condo, or a small one-story home, then go with a traditional router. But with very large one-story homes, or two-story homes, or three-story homes, or even homes with basements, then go with a mesh Wi-Fi system. This prevents dead zones and provides a strong and reliable signal everywhere. So that's the basic differences between mesh and traditional routers. And make sure to check out our recommended routers in the links below. And if you're in the market for a mesh Wi-Fi system, check out this video right here. Or if you're in the market for a traditional wireless router, check out this video right here. And I'll see you in the next video real soon. High five. Peace. <laughs>